Hi and welcome to part one of the hex based strategy game. In this part we're going to set up our hex based tile map and also do the basics of pathfinding and movement for our first ship. So in the first part you'll have one ship that can move out the hex based map and will be fairly good at pathfinding while also being fairly quick and efficient. Okay let's get started. So in the description I've included the start files this project along with the finished files. In the start files, all I've included is a couple of assets which give us two different tile sets, one for blank space, one for an obstacle, and a ship we can use as well. So first things first, let's create a tile map. I find this easier, especially when doing an awkwardly sized tile map, is to just create them as two sprites and then export that as a tile map. So let's add two child sprite nodes. And for each of these, I'm going to throw them in there. And from there, we can just be able to convert that to a tile set. We'll call that tilemap.tres. Then we'll create another 2D scene that we'll call our overall world. Add a tile map child to that. Check in our tile set, and there we have our two tile maps. So, really ready to create tile maps if using the whole of one image. Let me just save that as tile map in case I need to adjust it later on. Okay, we've got our two tile maps. However, this grid is nowhere near the right size. My tile maps are roughly, they're not quite, 256 by 256. So throw that in. You see it sort of works. However, these aren't looking nice. That's because we have hex based tiles we're using a square based grid. Turns out for Godot, there is no special hex based option, and custom just gets confusing, mainly to rectangles and stuff. What we want to do, we want to use a square based grid, however we want to half offset our tiles. If we offset X, we can see we then can get this nice sort of hex tile shape work, working out. We've got to change our size. This you just work it out based on whatever looks good. For me, 227 was kind of about perfect for squishing those tiles all together. So what I now is create a tile map. That's basically going to say all the things that I want my pathfinding code to do in a few minutes time. So this is going to tile map I'm going to test my pathfinding on and get our first bit of script working on. Um, so my initial position will be 0, 0, which will be here. We're going to add a few things. Let's add some code to my tile map. Uh, whenever I start a program like this, in my ready function, I like throwing everything that I'm going to use that are sort of special to a tile map. So here, these are all useful things that we can use and work with tile maps. And I basically work them out by seeing what's in the notation, documentation, and just print them and seeing what I'm eventually going to use. First thing I'm going to do is I want my tile maps to be centered at zero, zero. I want my zero tile to be centered right at the origin. So I'm do that first now. To do that, we're going to set up a fair, and it's going to be called center hex. That is just going to get the size of each texture and divide it by two. And that's going to be the center of my tiles. We're then going to say in my ready function, just shift everything according to that. While I'm here, I'm going to set a few more things in my world. I'm going to set up a camera 2D. That's just zoomed out as a factor 2, and that I can start as on. So I basically see that box there when I start it. And again, because things shift across, I'm going to have this 0, 0 cell will be centered here, which makes things look a lot easier the more we do it. So yeah, there's my 0, 0 right in the middle. I'm also going to add another child that's going to be a sprite, and that's going to be my ship. For that, we can just drag this straight in. That's a tiny bit too big, so let's scale it down to half its current size. Okay, uh, the first major we got is that we've of course got square based tiles here. You can just about see them for hover over here. We've got a hex based grid. What we want to do it is once when I click down somewhere, it will account for the fact we're a hex based grid and it will return to me the correct cell I want. So here, let's go with my zero zero cell, which is up here. That area there is not zero, it's zero zero. That should belong to zero minus one. And same with this bit here, it's not one zero. It should belong to zero minus one. So we're gonna add that code in first. Typically for this to work, I would have to add on center hex my mouse position. I'm not going to do that because I can have a later on by pathfinding code that I'm not going to go into too much detail here. So for this code, 
we're going to say left hand is true. That tells you from the left hand side or the right hand side. I want to work out what cell I think I'm in. So that's world to map of my mouse position. I'm then going to work out what are called the danger rows. These are the rows where I could be in the wrong position. To work that out, it is just the overlap between how big my tiles, my tile textures are, take away how big my cell sizes are. It's that overlap. I just want the height, so I just want the Y values on both of these. I then need a local mouse position. By that I mean, what is the mouse position within that cell? For that, it's just the mouse position minus mapped world of cell. So notice that this variable is just world to map and map to world of the mouse position. That will always return the top left hand corner of whatever cell you're in. So I'm going to do mouse position minus that, I'm just left with the offset or the local position. We're going to have an if loop and we're going to say if my local mouse position is within the danger rows, we need to check whether or not I'm in these regions here, where I want to be saying I'm in a different cell than what the world to map code thinks I'm in. To do that, we'll set up a top middle of cell variable which we'll use in a bit. That's just going to be the cell size x halved. In order to work out if we're in the wrong cell, we need something called the gradient of my danger line. That is basically going to tell me how steep this line here is. Okay. Then if I'm above that line, I'm over here. And if I'm below that line, I'm in the cell I think I'm in. To get your gradient, it is just the height divided by the width. So the height is this danger rows variable, which is basically this length here. And the width is given by top middle of the cell, which is basically the half length of my cell. So that is danger rows divided by top middle of cell. Next we need the variable. That will be the x position to check. That will typically just be my local mouse position x. However, I'm going to code it so that if I click on the right hand side, I'm just going to return the left hand side instead. So if I click here, I want instead to say just do all the maths as if I was over here because that would be equivalent. So if the x position to check is greater than the top middle of the cell, then just reflect it around. To do that, we just do the whole cell, the whole cell size minus x position to check. If we have to do this, that then told me I'm in the right hand side. So I can say left hand is false. Now we're going to do that check. I'm going to look at my tile map and see whether we are above this line or whether we're below that line. Because that time we have need to reach whatever cell or not. So if I'm above that line, we know that y will be greater than the equation of the line, which is going to be kx. So to get the y value, that is going to be danger rows minus the local mouse position dot y. The reason we're doing that is that the zero um, yeah, the coordinate zero zero for local position with this top left corner, but I want it to start from here. So I've got to do danger rows minus that, and danger rows is this length here. That needs to be greater than kx. k is the gradient, and x is just the x coordinate. So if this is true, we have the wrong cell, and we need to correct for it. We've got a few cases. If on the left hand side, we do one set, right, so there's another set. Also, by the way, the tile map works. It depends whether we're on an odd or an even row. So here I'm on zero, zero, which is an even row. And my top left was minus one, minus one. And my top right was zero, minus one. So I have to go to minus one and zero. We're looking at the x coordinates here to go up a row. If I was at zero, one to go up, my x coordinate stays as zero. To go top right, my x coordinate goes up to one. So these things are different if I'm on an even row or an odd row. So we need to add that in. To work out if on an even row, we use the modulus function. And we're going to say if the mod of my cell and 2 equals 0. So that is basically saying if there's no remainder when I divide by 2. If I'm on an even row, then we need to change what cell I'm on. So you can work this out by looking at your tile map. So if I'm on an even row, I want to change like this. If I'm on an odd row, I want to change my cell according to this. Then we need roughly the exact same thing again if on the right hand side. So copy this code down and just change these numbers to a 0 and a 1. So that's code done. We can now tell it to return the cell. And we can check the code's working if we need to. So I said for this code to work properly, we're going to temporarily say that mouse position has to adjust for the fact 
that I've shared my, all my positions about. And let's add some code to the world. All I need here is an input event. I'm going to say, if I've just released the left click button, remember to go to project, project settings and add that into your input map, left click. If we've just released that, then go to my tile map and it was called the find cell function. And we're going to print what it is. So we, just, we can read and make sure it's working. I need to pass the mouse position to that as well. So now if we click, it tells us what cell we're in. And it's just for the fact that I want a hexagonal grid. So here if I go, here I'm 0, 0. If I just switch across, it now knows on this tile instead. So that'll help us with pathfinding. What I'm going to create next is going to be an overlay tile. So what this is going to do is whenever I create a path, I want to highlight something. I'm going to use, what's, I'm going to use an overlay tile. That's just going to be a pure white tile that we're going to modulate. So we can throw any texture in as long as it's the right size. Uh, we don't want it centered. That's fairly important. And we're just going to throw in a bit of shader code. I won't go through this in much detail because it's all about the tile sets rather than um, how to use shader code. Then here, basically in the code, I won't explain all of it because I'm not great at shader code. We're going to say, get the texture. And UV basically means return me all the bits which are not see-through. Okay, so these bits are see-through. We can ignore those. I'm going to find all these bits where they're not see-through. For each of those bits there, I want to set it to be pure white. So the color is 111, which is full brightness of everything. And I'm also going to set it as alpha to be the same. Okay, once you've done that, we've now got a pure white hex that we can use. And later on, we're going to modulate that as we need to. So you play around this, you go to the modulate code, you make it sort of any color you wish to. I'm also going to write a quick function that's going to lay a tile down. And that's when I basically want to call it. It's going to put down one of my tiles I just created and modulate it so it looks see-through. Do that. We'll instance one of the overlay tiles. We're going to set its position to just be the position of the cell that we told to uh, create it at. So we need map to world of that cell. We need to modulate it. So we don't want it to appear as a pure white cell it is. We want to change a few things. So again, you play around with this. For me, setting all four variables to 0 0.5 worked out fairly nice for me. And lastly, we're going to add it as a child to this tile map. Next we have to deal with is going to be the pathfinding code. So I've linked this in the video description. I'm going to handle all the pathfinding in a separate video because it's more about the hex based strategy rather than the pathfinding. For this, you have loads of choices. Uh, your main choice is I use Navigation 2D, which is a built-in node in Godot. I didn't use that because it got really fussy about what size my hexes were. And then once I had a very slightly squished hex that looked perfect to me, but the whole Navigation 2D node just broke down. Well, of course, I can't fix it because I can't really go into it. You can use A star pathfinding, which is quite popular. I didn't use that. It took me like a few, about a second to load up this kind of map with A star pathfinding, which I felt was a bit over the top. Aside from that, you have Breach, which basically looks in all directions, and we're using Best Fit Pathfinding, which basically finds, basically tries to head towards it as fast as it can. If I do that, just make sure on tile map I've deleted this line here. Okay, I'm just going to copy in, uh, I think, five functions that are going to handle all the pathfinding now. Okay, I've added in those five functions to handle all pathfinding for me. So now, when the pathfinding runs, whenever it finds a tile that's on the path, it's going to lay a tile down there. We're going to be able to work with that now. We're going to say path is get the node tile map. Run the pathfind function. We need a start position, which can be the ship's current position. And we need the target position or an end position. That's going to be get global mouse position. And if you run that, that should be working. And wherever we click, it's going to highlight uh, the path it's going to take to get there is going to be the shortest, the best distance. Okay, we're nearly done. All we need to do now is handle my ship's movements. So let's attach a script to the ship. And let's see what we need to do. We're going to set up a few there. Again, I'll go for this fairly quickly. Because I want to focus on the tile set of things than uh, basic movements, which you can research elsewhere in more detail if you need to. So a few bears for our speed, our velocity, our target point, and a path. Uh, we're going to set up a finite state machine. So I'm going to have two states called idle and move. 
and we're going to start off as idle. I'm going to run a physics process. So that's going to match our state. If we're idle, we can do nothing. Okay, we're going to add a move, we're going to write a move function now. I'll handle my ship moving. All I need to pass to it is just going to be a target position. For this, I'm going to use fairly standard steering code. So I'm going to define a mass or weight. I'm also going to define an arrive distance. That basically says when it's within that distance, I'm going to say it's arrived at the next step in its path. So if we make this too small, okay, it'll wheel backwards and forwards. Let's try to sit close and close to its position. We're going to have a target velocity. That is just going to be its target position minus its current position. We then need to normalize that vector and then times it by the speed. Next one available that I'm going to call steering. That will basically indicate how much we want to change from our current velocity to our target velocity. And we're going to say we can change that velocity based upon my mass. So basically the heavier I am, the more slowly I can make a change to my velocity. We're having a head movement that's kind of hard to get going and hard to change direction. Next, we can update our position. We can say position is just going to be add on the velocity. We want to times that by delta. I'll need to define yeah, And that's pretty much it. I also want a rotation. That will just equal the velocity angle. However, my sprite is offset by 90 degrees. What I'm going to return here, I'm going to return basically half of an if loop. I'm going to ask it to return whether or not the distance from the current position to the target, so position and then it's distance to the target position, I'm going to return whether or not that is less than my arrived distance. If this distance is less than the arrived distance, then we finished that segment of our journey and we'll then tell it to look at the next step in my path. So let's add that all in now. We're going to have a variable that's called arrived at the next point. And that will just be this function here. So this will return true if we arrive at our next point, And it will return false if we haven't. Here my target position should be my target point there. We're going to say if we arrive at our next point, we then want to remove that goal from our path. And then go to our next position you also need to say if the length of the path is zero. In other words, if there's no places left to go. And in that case, we are finished. And we can reset my state to idle. Otherwise, we get a new target point, And that will be the new path to zero. OK, so what this code will do, it will basically move me until I get to my target position. Whenever I've done that, it will strike away that entry from my path and say go to the next position until I've gone to all of those positions. We can now call that in the world function. I'm going to kind of call it right here. We're going to say if path, what this will do, this will return true if the path exists. So in the case in my tile map, if I clicked on an obstacle, it wouldn't run anything. It wouldn't return any bit of code for when it says return path. So in that case, that would say path is null. And then if path would return false because path does not exist. We're going to say the ship path equals path. And we want to set that ship state to move. Okay, and that should be it. If we run that, when we click, now the ship moving. So my rotation is a bit off there. Let's flip that around. Yeah, that should be a plus there, not a times. Okay. And there we go. We have our basic hex grid set up. We have a ship on it, which we can now move and which is moving and handled by yeah, a fairly intelligent pathfinder position. Okay, I hope you found that useful. If you did, please let me know in comments, and I'll try and work on a part two to this to carry on. Otherwise, thanks for listening.